God bless you, everyone. Happy Mother's Day. Mm, thank God for all of you. Happy Mother's Day, ladies. It's a wonderful thing to be a mother. A real mother indeed. Who train up the child in the way of the Lord. And when they get old, they'll never depart. And those who are not mother, at least if you reach the age of motherhood, you still mother. You mother somebody's child. You watch somebody's child. You got family with children. Just be a blessing and pretend like they are your children. God will give you children you never birthed. God is good. We thank God for those mothers of the Bible. We can't talk about them today. But Hannah, in 1 Samuel chapter 1, we see how the Lord used her mightily. She prayed and fasted in the house of God. And he like bless her and say, your pride is heard before God. Never cease to pray because your prayer is before the Lord. And you don't forget the prayer and the time you spent in prayer and you sacrifice before him. You fasting and your prayer. God never forget that. He's faithful to bless you. He blessed Anna with a son. And Hannah said, I'm going to give him back to the Lord. So she take him to the house of God. So he like train him. He like train Samuel to be a prophet of God. And when he was trained, the mother would take a coat for him every year because he grown that one out. And she take she make it herself and take it to the house of God and give it to Samuel, her son. You know, this is how she treated that child with honor and respect. In the train up a child in the way they should go when they old and never depart. So mother is a precious thing to be a mother. And God bless that lady with Hannah, with more sons and daughters because she was faithful. Only be faithful, be strong, and be courageous mothers. God love you, and I love you too. And then before we go to the book of Daniel, we're going to go to the prayer. If you're sick in your body, financially, spiritually, physically, pain, <coughs> heart rhitis, breast cancer, not too hard for God. No cancer is hard. That liver cancer, they say you got lump on your liver. God is greater. Be faithful and believe that God is able to heal. I've seen many heal. And you got a migraine headache today, you need to be healed. Let's go to the throne of grace. You believe that God is able? Yes, he's able to heal. If he can heal me, he can heal you. Let's go to the throne of grace. Father God, in the name of Jesus, seeing we have a great high priest sitting at the throne of God, waiting for us to come boldly. He gave us this privilege to come into your presence that we could seek and knock and ask. And he said, whatever we shall ask in faith, believing. No prayer of faith is unanswered. Sometimes you might say, wait. <coughs> but wait on the Lord <coughs> and be of good courage. And it will strengthen your heart. Father Jesus, we thank you. We pray for our country. We pray for our leaders, Lord Jesus. You said prayer should be made for all those in authority. Because, Lord, you desire everyone to be saved. As gone to 1 Timothy chapter 2 and 1. You desire that all men to be saved, Lord. So we are praying for all our authorities of this country. We pray for our president, vice president, Lord Jesus. Everyone in their respective place, CIA, Jesus, our police department, Lord, let reform and bless them. Our fire department, they come when we call. All our 911 call, Red Cross. Everyone, Lord, our doctors and nurses, they are so special. When we go to, <clears throat> when we go to the emergency, they are always there waiting. Lord, bless them, strengthen them. Strengthen them, Lord. Bless them with wisdom and knowledge. And we thank you for them. And as for those who are sick today in your body, we curse that headache, that migraine headache, that cancer. In the name of Jesus, we decree a miracle in the body, miracle in the breast right now. Breast cancer is nothing to add for God. God is able to heal pancreatic cancer, whatever you're going through. Dialysis, nothing to add for God. 
and we are praying for healing. Let the Son of Righteousness arise even now with healing in his wings because he's able to heal. God is able to come on and praise him. Thank him for your healing. Come on and thank him. Thank him. He said to come before his presence with praise and thanksgiving. While you're there praising, give him some hallelujah shout and some thanks because he's able to heal and he knows your body. He knows your frame that we are only dust. God is able. Come on and praise him. If you believe God, you are healed by his stripes. Now let's go to the throne of grace. Now we go to the throne of grace. Let's go to the word. You know, we are in the book of Daniel. We continue to complete the seventh chapter. As we see Daniel prior before God, because he was so faithful. He's very faithful and he takes the word of God seriously. And when he read the word of God and he start fasting and praying and say, Lord, we do not pray and fast like we should. We do not be faithful to God like he should to us. He give himself completely to prayer. He got prayer in the morning, in the, in the daytime, and in the evening. And we see how the Persian and the Babylonian, they were jealous of him and persecute him. Now we come to, Daniel have so many visions. And when you wonder about so many Israelis that went to Babylon, and this, this Daniel, Mishap, and Abednego, Shadrach, they call him Shadrach. When, when they, God used them mightily, they wondered about this Israeli. Oh, God could use these little men so mightily, especially Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar had a vision. He did not know the interpretation. Two vision he had. He could not find any one of the Median Persian to interpret his vision. So they heard about Daniel, that he interpreted a vision before. So they called him. After he prayed, he said, Nebuchadnezzar, do not destroy uh, all of these Medes and Persians. They could not interpret the dreams. All these witch, they are witch. They could not interpret the vision because they don't hear from God. What Daniel said, tell Nebuchadnezzar, I can go pray. Give me some time to pray. When he prayed and fasted and interpret the vision. And Daniel be getting dreams and vision from the Lord ever since. Great vision from the Lord. So great that he fainted in the presence of God. So we see Daniel interpretation of, of Nebuchadnezzar vision. About the great beast and with eye and teeth. And he, he interpreted the vision. But in chapter 7, we see where Daniel received the same vision again. But more vision and more interpretation. These vision lead us right back to the book of Revelation. The beast, the iron teeth, and the three different kingdoms all together. And the fourth kingdom. And now we come to the place where Daniel has another vision in chapter 7. And it, it, it described the vision, but no one could understand it. He said, Lord, unless you give me understanding. And when he received the vision, he fainted because of the presence of God and a sinful flesh before God. He fainted. He said he was sick for a few days because he passed out. And God re revived him again. And when he started seeking the Lord for interpretation, God sent his angel, his messenger from heaven, to Daniel, I said, Daniel, you're highly favored of God. You're a man of favored before God. Can, can God say that about us? You're faithful. Only be faithful, only be strong enough for good courage. And he strengthened Daniel. And you see, Daniel was the one when he fasted. When you fasted, you're going to have affliction. Not only in the presence of God, he fainted, but sometimes if, if, when he fasted, maybe in his time off from the king, he fasted in his 
area we are praying in prayer closet i don't know where you prayed in his office but when when he was transformed in the image of god at that moment you see, he had no connection with wife and children, so he was fully devoted to God. Because he was a king, he was next to the king, and he had to be devoted. He had no time for wife and children. You know, he was a eunuch otherwise, you'd call him a eunuch. But he become a eunuch for God. When, you know, when you're not de devote yourself to this world, you devote yourself to God. I'm not saying everyone should be like that. But he was faithful to God faithful very faithful and god gave him all those great dreams and interpretation and i'm going to tell you about fasting because i've been there when you fast the fleshly attitude the carnality in us carnal weakness must go so god can use you sometimes we this flesh is sinful and we try it sometimes what we sin when we don't even know it. Sometimes we say a word we should even say. We think the way we shouldn't, our carnal mind. That's why we have to fast to get rid of carnality. That we could see others like love others like we love ourselves. With the love of Jesus. But when he fasted, what happened? You got affliction from fasting. With my experience, I got bad sore throat. If you don't drink enough water during that time, you have sore throat so bad, you might even see the doctor. You got weakness in your body. Sometimes you could, could get a little fever or cold because your body get weak. When you become weak in the flesh and weak to yourself, flesh, fleshly attitude start fall off. When the Holy Spirit come and strengthen you after that. So for many days, you got to take your time to eat again after a strong fasting. It all depends on how much deep depths you could go in the fasting. After three days without food, you got to take your time to eat and drink again like a babe. Start with your fruits and vegetables. But Daniel was a man of vegetables anyway. He did not eat the king's meat from the beginning. But if you see how Daniel's devotion to God and when the angel of the Lord come and said, Daniel, you are highly favored of God. I come to give you the interpretation. Can God see that up in us? Can God come and say, you're very faithful. You come to prayer. Sometimes you go to pray. You, it's not your fine words. It's your heart and your mind that bow before God. And say, Lord, forgive me, Lord. I need some help. Forgive me, Lord. Crucified his fleshly attitude in me. Lord, forgive me, I come short of your glory. When we go before God, he said, just come before his presence. Bring him a song. Some of us are like song books, where we don't sing the song. We have them locked up on the inside. Come before him with a song. One of your best songs that you know. Come before him, praise the everlasting God. Praise him, acknowledge him. Isn't that your everyday male man? which you still love, is the everlasting God, the Father, everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the one who died on the cross and gave his life for us as a ransom for us. Think about the suffering that he go to. That's why we take all the communion. Think about how he suffered for us. When you take that cup, think about those nails in his, in his nerves, in his foot, and in the nerves in his palm of his hands to hold him up on the cross. And, and the, the thorn in his head, his beard plucked out, his flesh beaten up, blood streaming down. There's no love so great like the love of Jesus. And then when you start crucifying flesh, the love of Jesus becomes stronger in you. You see your loved ones different. You take a look at yourself and look at others differently. Anyway, let's go back to Daniel. Last week he talked about how Daniel, when Daniel saw the vision of, the, of God, how great and how awesome, and what he looked, the description of God, like John in Revelation 1, chapter 1. He described God 
the ancient of days, and then you'll come, describe him the same way. He said, from everlasting to everlasting. So, oh, so we must be looking. You could only see God in a vision. You can't see him with your eyes. No one can see God and live. But you see, Jesus, Jesus said to Thomas in the book of John, chapter 15, 14, when you see me, you see the Father. Genesis 1, Daniel, sorry, John 1 and 1. When you see Jesus, you have seen the Father. He is in us. And the Spirit of God that dwells in us. What are we doing with the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit He gave us? When we come to Him and say, Lord, forgive my sins, and receive the Holy Spirit, what are we doing with it? We got to do the most power, but we don't use it. We don't use the do the most power, the dynamite power of the Holy Spirit that dwells in us. He can use us mightily, no matter who we are. But sometimes something hinders us, the loss of the flesh and the pride of life. We laid it down before God in prayer and fasting. So now this is the house of power that Daniel saw when he, when he see Jesus, the ancient of days. And that's the reason why he fainted, because you can't see God and live. And even though it's a vision, when Daniel saw him, when John saw him, they fainted because you can't see God and live, even in a vision. Even in a vision. So this is, this is a, the God that we serve, the mighty God. And this is the interpretation that, that, that Daniel received from the word. He said, Daniel 8 and 15. Daniel said he received in the interpretation from God. This is the interpretation that he received. Eight, oh, sorry, chapter 7 and 15. He said, this is the vision we saw. It was overwhelming to Daniel until he fainted. I just tell you about that we fainted because the mighty, awesome power of God. It's not something you can play around with. When God put that mighty Holy Ghost power in you, you know, we have to know who lives in us. We have to know that mighty power. When you accept Jesus as Savior, it's not something simple. But you don't do nothing with the power that God gave us. It's like somebody give you some money, and you take it and put it in your purse or your pocket. Do nothing. Don't be a do-nothing person. You're a child of the living God, and the Spirit of God dwells in you, like in Daniel. The division was so overwhelming that he fainted. Yes, he fainted. And there he asks, he, he keep asking someone. He write the vision. He keep asking someone he knows, should know about that vision. Someone he see, maybe the pastors, priests, and prophet, they don't know anything because God did not reveal it to them. But now the angel of the Lord who was standing by Daniel, we have the angel of the Lord that encamp it round about them that fear him to deliver. God said it. In Psalm 34 and 7, the angel of the Lord encamp it round about them that fear him to deliver. If you fear God, you have the angel of the Lord standing by you right now to deliver you. But we must call upon the Lord while he's near. We must pray and see God's face. Like I said, it's not the great fine word you can speak. It is your heart. It's what you feel about God. And when you go before him and start praising him, the Holy Spirit sometimes take over your tongue. And maybe you carry some people to the, your knees with you. And God knows. He knows that you have them in mind. He knows that you're mindful of your families and friends who are not saved. So when you go to your knees and... He start praising God and sing, and sing him a new song every day. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Praise him from the depths of your soul. You start praising him. Sometime in the morning you get up, you feel sleepy. Drink a little water and get on your knees and start praising God. How about thanking him for waking you up to see the sun for another day? Another birthday, another day. Praise him. David said, I rejoice as one that findeth great spoil. I rejoice as in many riches. I rejoice as a strong man to run a race. That's how we should feel about God. And that's what Daniel has felt. When you start praising him, you feel the mighty power of God make you speak in tongues. 
tongues are, tongues are giving at times when I have to speak to you right now in English, so I don't need a tongue right now. So God is not a God of confusion. Some people preaching and speaking in tongues, no. No one can understand because you're speaking to God himself and building up yourself in the most holy faith. So this is how the angel of the Lord is standing by Daniel. The Bible said the angel of the Lord is standing by him. Verse 15. I come to give you interpretation, Daniel. We don't know. God said it's in the, it, this part is angel to encamp around about them that fear him. Then you have a God who can give you interpretation to your dreams and your vision. Write them down. Sometimes you can't tell anyone because they don't understand. And sometimes you tell somebody and they do understand and interpret because the Lord have them there for you. There's a time for everything and a place. But Daniel speak his vision and he write them down. But no one understands really what the vision and the dream is all about. So here the angel of the Lord said, the four beasts, they are four kingdoms. They are four great kingdoms that will come on earth and they will pass away. But the last one is dreadful, have iron teeth. Yes, they have iron teeth because they're going to heat up everything around them. People, money, everything. And the last one you see is going to be the Roman Empire. The first Roman Empire remained for a hundred years, over a hundred years. But Rome going to rise again in the last days. And when we see all these things come to pass, it's in the word of God right here. In Daniel chapter 7 and 15, in the last days, when we see all these things start to come to pass, and Rome gets strong, and start devouring everything, and the little horn that come out of Rome, in Revelation 13 and 1, that little horn that rise up we talked about last week, when it start rising up and become great, Speaking filthy words, filthy things, damning everybody, and he alone must live. And those who don't serve him must die. And he's the one that brings 666. That the people will take the mark of the beast, sold out to the devil. After Revelation 13, all of those people on earth calling upon the name of Jesus. After all those Jewish Evangelist in chapter 7 start witnessing the hurt and the hurt start to all those who believe that Jesus is Lord at that time must give their neck for the gospel. And when they give their neck for the gospel, heaven rejoice. And so many Gentiles and Jews coming out of Jerusalem and coming out of every four corner of the world because the 144,000, they're going to be in all parts of the world in chapter 7. They're going to be in all parts of the world. You can't kill those Jews. They're going to be witnessed by the great and mighty God in a time like that. And God is going to secure them until their time comes from the earth. The, the Antichrist, the, the great beast will not destroy them because they have to give their life anyway. But God have them on the earth for a reason. The remnant. 144,000 is called a remnant. 144,000 are a few people. But they are called a remnant that are going to be in the book of Revelation. So now in Revelation chapter 14, we see the interpretation here. Revelation, sorry, Daniel chapter 7 and 14. We see the, the, the interpretation of the beast that come out the hurt. The vision were so overwhelming and troubling to Daniel. And he's fainted, and therefore the hawks of those were standing by him, those people around him, those people he think know the vision. He hawks them, do you know this interpretation? They said no. And then the angel of the Lord tell him, the four kings, king, uh, kingdom, seven, four kingdom, that's seven and seventeen, four kingdom. And Nebuchadnezzar had his dream, but he did not. And Daniel was especially distressed when he get this vision. But God comforted him. Blessed be the name of the Lord God who comforted us in all our affliction. 
You might be going through affliction in some way, but blessed be the name of the Lord God with comfort. In all our distress, in all our pain, be of good courage. You might be going through pain. God knows you have cancer. He's touched with your weakness. But blessed be the name of the Lord God who comforted us in all our affliction. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Whether we live or die, he never leave us or forsake us. We have nothing to worry about. If you know the Lord is keeping you, you don't have to worry. No matter how you feel. No matter what you're going through. No matter what they're doing you on the job. Sometimes God has another door open. Sometimes you think it's a door open. Only for a while. But God has a greater door for you. Greater thing for you. God loves you. And he has greater things for you. He loved Daniel. And he know that Daniel fainted. But he said, let the flesh die. Let the spirit man live. And Daniel lived to tell the vision. You will live to tell the story. You will live to tell what Jesus has done for you. And some of us need to testify. Just testify to others. Tell them of the goodness of Jesus and what the Lord can do for you. It's not by power by might, but by the Holy Spirit. Every mountain shall be removed and cast into the middle of the sea. God will provide. God will make a way. God will hope and do it for you. God will hope and do it for you. Doors have been shut for a while. God is opening new doors for you right now. God is opening new doors for somebody right now. God is opening some door for you right now. Just trust him. Just believe him like Daniel. And we're going to see how Dan God showed Daniel what taking place and what's supposed to take place on the earth. God will make a way for you. He remember all your prayer. Let's come to Psalm 20. He remember all your offering. He remember all your fasting. He remembered how your hawks. He remember how you've been faithful in your tithes and your offering before him. So God is opening new doors. Only be strong and be courageous. Like Moses said to Joshua. It looked like it rough out there. It looked like some things coming on the earth that you don't understand and some sickness. And they said COVID is still rampant. But only be strong and be courageous. Your God will provide. Your God will take care of you. He will see you too. We don't understand sometimes some affliction might come upon us. But only be strong and be courageous. God love you. Today you, you might not have that spiritual strength like Daniel. That, you know, we might not know how to serve God in spirit and in truth. But you can know him today. You can know him by asking him into your life. Let him in today. God love you. And he bless you to hear this message today. Maybe you're a Christian and you need to be strong. I'm not saying you should go into fasting and prayer. It's something you're going to little by little. It's not a overnight thing you're just going to rush into. God will not let you rush into something if you're a babe Christian. Or if you're not used to fasting. But devote your time to God. Reading the word. When you see the word, don't take it for granted. Let the Lord speak to you. Take your Bible and say, Lord, speak to my heart. And continue reading. And when you get to the verse where God is speaking to you, you're going to know. Today, ask him into your heart today. Ask him to come into your heart. Ask him to save you if you're not saved. Ask him to give you this hope of eternal life. Lord, I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to burn in the lake of fire. Neither do I want to go to that tribulation when we're coming upon the hurt in the end time. If my life is spared, come into my heart, Lord. Save me before it's too late. Save me and my family before it's too late. And if you earnestly call upon the Lord, he said, not a call upon me shall be ashamed. Ask him into your heart today. If you hear his word, harden not your heart. This might be your last time. This might be your last day upon the earth. Ask him to come into your heart. You know, you can lay aside that jug, what you have there. Put it down. You're picking up the jug to put in your mouth. Put it down. Jesus love you. And put that glass down. And get on your knees and say, Lord, come into my heart. Save me, Lord, before it's too late. God sees you. God sees the things you're doing. And you know your life is not pleasing before God. 
But God love you so much. He said, come unto me. All you that are labor and are heavy burdened. And I will give you a rest. I'm going to pray the simple prayer with you. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I want to be saved. I want to have this hope of eternal life. I want to see Jesus in his glory and not in his wrath. And if you do so, welcome to the family of God. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Carter.